Where on earth have you brought us, Lester? What is this place? <laughs> well, I told you I'd uh, take you to see a thermal labyrinth. <laughs> this is actually about two metres below the Jones Sutherland Performing Arts Centre and in Penrith. Now, of course, you know Penrith gets very hot and yep. it gets very cold as well. So when we designed this back in 2003, we thought to ourselves, well, we need a lot of thermal mass. So what we did, we built this rock bed thermal storage system. And the way the, work, the system works is that it's about a metre of uh, of pebbles, dry pebbles, uh, and the pebbles were designed to be about 65 millimetres diameter. And when they're all packed in like this, there's actually an air path that can pass through. And when the air passes, the 40 degree air passes over them, what they do is that they, they engage with the, uh, with the stone, uh, the stones and the pebbles, and they, they actually absorb along the cool uh, from, the, from the pebbles. It must be a huge amount of surface area. A huge amount of surface area, which makes it very efficient. It's very slow air moving. Yep. Uh, it's about 0.2 metres a second across it. Yep. And then by the time the air gets to here from outside, it's already uh, lost around about maybe eight degrees. Wow, eight degree drop. Yeah. And this is this is breathing air? This is going This inside. is breathing air. This yeah, is breathing yeah. air. It goes into the air conditioning unit and the air conditioning unit doesn't have to work so hard before it then goes into an underfloor distribution system, wow, underfloor incredible. displacement system. And even though there might be a bit of dust in here, the filters and the air handler just pick all that up. That's anyway, right. Yeah. So it's all good. Yeah. And one of the big issues with uh, with thermal labyrinths is the concern of aspergillus, and that's a, a mould that can grow on on thermal labyrinths if it's if it's damp in here, and that can actually cause uh, respiratory issues. So when we designed this, we actually went to some experts at the University of Sydney, and they gave us an indication of the sort of things that we needed to do. It's very dry in here. It doesn't feel damp at all. No, so it, it is very dry. Yeah, yeah. the drainage is yeah. fantastic. Yeah. So. Um, so this was uh, designed in ooh, I read about no, 2003, and uh, it's been working ever since then. And wow. of course, uh, it helps hold up the building as well. Because it's really integrated into the foundation, so it's not like there's a lot of extra work necessarily That's going right. into this. This space was probably needed for levelling the site and building, That's right. building off anyway. That's so. right. And of course, during the night time, what happens is we have a fan and we draw nighttime air through these rocks, and that actually charges them with cool. Wow. And it gets rid of that warm air out, and it's just a light, lightweight, low static fan. What a great which idea! Just pulls the air through. We haven't seen too many of these in in Sydney, um, but it's the sort of thing that works well in a climate where it gets very hot yep. and very cold. Big you diurnal think, swings. Big diurnal swings anywhere inland it works. You know, the better, the further inland you, you go, the, yep. the better it works. Yeah. Places like Canberra is ideal. Yep. Places like Lithgow, Bathurst, Orange, Wagga Wagga, Broken yep. Hill. These sorts of places lend themselves to these types of uh, this type of. Well, I guess there's a lot of cave housing in Broken Hill. There's That's no right. people living yeah. in caves. Well, the whole idea actually comes from uh, Genoa Caves. I mean, if you ever if you've ever been to Genoa Caves on a forty degree day, yeah. you don't have to walk very far into the cave, and all of a sudden it becomes eighteen degrees because yeah. at this latitude, the ground temperature once you get down to about six meters uh, levels out at about eighteen degrees, wow. and so. Theoretically, you could build a house which would always be 18 degrees, yeah. a bit like they do in Cooper Pedy and places like that. Yeah, yeah. And you, that's the concept. If you connect it into the ground like this. Yeah, connect yeah, it yeah. into the ground. Yeah. So as you can see, Matt, um, the, the shading the reveal that we had on this was uh, situated quite high up. And the reason we did that is because we had such a large, uh, high um, northern facade with, uh, of glass uh, in serving the, the, uh, the foyer space. What we wanted to do was, is, was get the, the sunlight coming in in wintertime and at equinox, then it would flip so we'd have full shading all the way through. Yeah, so yeah. what happens is that right on equinox, you'll find this very thin slithers of sunlight inside on floor and then once it gets into the summer months, we get no sun coming to penetrating the, the glass whatsoever. And a great covered colliday through there as well and for it, everybody to move around. And it does, yeah, yeah, yeah. The whole internal foyer space actually is is mixed mode ventilation. Okay. So are those got, louvers at the bottom? They are louvers at the bottom, okay. and they open up when the ambient conditions here are, are nice. You know, they're nice and um, let's say below twenty four degrees, yep. twenty five degrees, and then all the warm air will sort of rise up, and we've got louvers at the very top too to allow that air to escape. Oh, yeah. great! So a real thermal stack through there with all that height. That's you get brilliant. the thermal stack exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it works really well. I remember being here on the during this first summer, and we had a 32 degree day outside. And interestingly enough, inside it, it wasn't above 26 degrees. Oh wow! That's and it's amazing. just because of the thermal mass inside yeah, yeah. the building, and also the fact there was no direct solar. Oh, yeah. uh, and we had a little bit of a breeze coming through as well. Oh, that's right. And of course, we have some offices up here too, and all those offices are are also uh, naturally ventilated. Okay. So the, the occupants in those offices have got the opportunity to either open the window, get yep. natural ventilation, yep. or have air conditioning in okay. there too. So again, it's a true mixed mode. Do they have little fan coil units in each of those? Yes, they do. Yeah, little, are they um, chilled water fan coil? No, they were DX, but I think okay. just recently they've changed it over to, uh, to chilled water. Okay, so. okay. 
And it's interesting, actually, some of these are actually also open as well. So people yeah, are using back the, there is open. Yeah, the actual yeah, ventilation. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, a day like today, it's perfect. We'd also like to thank Penrith City Council and Graham Howe for allowing us to come in here and have a look at this installation 20 years later. Mm -hmm.